What's going on guys, Slavey here and welcome back to another Albion Online video. Today we will go over a very strong Trinity Spear build for the Corrupted Dungeon. This build will work on all the levels of the Corrupted Dungeons, so Hunter, Stalker and even Slayer. Whilst you get a glimpse of today's build, which I will explain in just a bit, I do want to tell you that this is not an easy to play build. I've done a fair bit of Corrupted Dungeons since my Broadsword Guide and the level of difficulty between that build and this build is night and day. With this Trinity Spear build you get punished for every single mistake you make. And unlike the Broadsword build, it's very difficult to recover from your mistakes. Despite the difficulty, it is a very strong build with a lot of utility to it. The spears in general are very versatile weapons, but in trade for their versatility, they are a bit more difficult to play than other weapons. However, that's just a matter of practice, so if you do like today's build and the playstyle it makes for, give yourself some time to get used to it, and slowly but surely you will become better at it. You do have a few options in how you want to go about playing this build. Or in other words, you can swap out some of your gear for other pieces and alter your playstyle that way. I'll also show you the possibilities at the end of this video. The playstyle of this weapon and build is as follows. You want to buff yourself with your primary ability to get spirit charges, which will increase your auto attack damage and range. You then want to utilize your special ability to root your enemy in place and get an attack speed buff. At this point, your auto attacks have increased damage, increased range and increased attack speed. So you will be dishing out a lot of damage real quick with your auto attacks. If the matchup allows you to, you can even proc your armor ability whilst attacking with these buffs and do even more damage. Within this setup, your secondary ability is mostly for utility purposes and you want to select the most favorable secondary ability based on the matchup. Most of the time, however, you will find yourself on the secondary ability that slows your enemy meaning they won't be able to get away from your auto attacks that easily. So you basically root your enemies with your special ability and you also keep them slowed with your secondary ability. Your boots ability can be used to chase someone down or make a run for it. And your helmet's ability is to either stop your enemy from running away or keep them in a weakened state. So the playstyle of this build is based on auto attacks, crowd control and a ton of pressure. The weapon we are using today is the Trinity Spear, which I think has a very cool special ability. Upon using this ability, which is named Spectral Trident, we leap towards a target location and root your enemy while you also deal a good chunk of damage against them. On the location of impact, you also create a magic area in which your attack and movement speed increases enormously. Now the great thing about this ability, aside from everything mentioned so far, is that during the jump you are also invulnerable. So not only do you deal damage, root your enemy in place and get insane buffs with this ability, you also get to avoid anything you want to. You typically want to use this ability offensively at first. If it's a long fight however, and you get to use it again, I personally see a lot of value in using it defensively to avoid enemy damage. But of course, this is situational, so use it however you see fit. Just know that you have options. For your primary ability, you want to be on Spirit Spear for most of the time, which is a buff that you can stack yourself by using this ability repeatedly. This buff will increase both your auto attack range and auto attack damage. However, there is a real danger to this ability, because as you stack it up, the energy cost increases. Make sure you manage your energy properly as you go about stacking Spirit Charges, since you will be out of energy before you even realize if you don't pay attention to it. And if you are out of energy with this build, you will literally lose any fight. To manage your energy properly, simply drop your stacks to zero when you don't need them and build them up again. Also be aware of the fact that you only have to reapply a new stack within 8 seconds. So don't spam your queue every other second. If you apply these two tips, you should be fine with your energy consumption in general. As for your secondary ability, most of the time you will be on Impaler, which will do damage to your enemy and slow them. If you have enemies that like to keep you at a distance, such as Frost Mages, you want to take Harpoon instead. Against Sword users, you want to take Cripple since it acts as a purge, and you may occasionally get value from Deflecting Spin. 
but as said prior most of the time you will find yourself on impaler and then the passive for this weapon which is life leech which adds a bit of sustain based on your auto attack damage since this build is all about auto attacks this passive gains enormous value with the Trinity Spear we take the Tethered Cape for extra damage on our auto attacks. Since our primary damage source is from auto attacks, we are guaranteed to proc our Tethered Cape whenever it's off cooldown. The helmet for this build is the Fiend Cowl, which gives you a purge to remove buffs from your enemy. If you have the upper hand during a battle, you want to use this to remove mobility buffs. But it can also be useful to remove a bunch of other stuff, such as Reflect and Healing. The force field ability on this helmet can be useful at times, so keep in mind you can always swap to this knockback ability if you have a need for it. The armor is the cleric rope, which gives the everlasting spirit buff that makes you immune to damage whilst increasing your own damage. You can use this ability both offensively and defensively based on the situation. Personally, I am more in favor of using it defensively and think there is much more value to be gained there, but I tend to use it offensive the moment I engage all too often. Soldier Boots with this build for mobility, which has the Wanderlust ability, which is great to run your enemies down or disengage from the fight altogether. This ability is very susceptible to purges, but it has immense value that can be used both offensively and defensively. You can always swap to run if you think you will get more value out of that for a specific matchup. The food you want to use with this build is Roasted Pure Mist Snapper, which increases your total health and heals you for a percentage of the damage you do. Combined with your weapon's passive, this just makes for a ton of sustain within this build. And then we have the resistance potion as our potion of choice with this build. This potion will increase your defenses and CC resistance by a huge amount and cannot be purged. So it will simply make you very tanky for its duration. If you go with the build as I've mentioned it so far, you simply want to take lunging strike for your primary ability Forest of Spears for your secondary ability and run on your boots for PvE purposes. The passive on your weapon and your food will make for plenty of sustain for the PvE side of things. Now let's go over some item alternatives for this build. Another option for your cape is the Bridgewatch Cape which will add even more CC to your build and keep your enemy locked in place even better. But be careful with the long cooldown of this cape and don't accidentally use it on something else. You can also change your Fiend Cal to Cleric Cal, which makes for a very good defense that can buy you some time for your other abilities to come back up again. But this does mean you will be left without a Purge. I've had enormous success with the Cleric Cal with this build on the Stalker level, but I'm not sure how that would go in Slayer. Another option is the Helion Hood, which adds even more pressure to this build, but if you do go with it, you have to commit to each and every fight fully to get any value out of it. A bit of a double-edged sword if you ask me, but viable nonetheless. For your food, you might want to bring Beef Stew with you as a swap, which will simply be better in fights where you don't need to sustain the snapper provides. But of course, bringing food swaps means you need to pay extra, and I feel like the snapper makes for a good middle ground. You could consider multiple potion options, such as poison, healing, and even sticky, and swap to them based on the situation. But whatever I said about food also applies to potions, in which you have to pay extra for this luxury. Once again, this is a very strong build that makes for a ton of pressure, among many other great things, but it is very difficult to perfectly play it. So if you do decide to go with this build, you definitely want to give yourself some time to get used to it. As always, remember to have fun, and I'll see you next time.